Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Sir Alex Ferguson Challenge with Sheffield United. In today's episode we've got a full summer transfer window to review. We have spent an awful lot of money and I believe we have massively improved our first 11. Once we've completed that we will be playing our first game of the season against Bournemouth. As you can see we only have £7.36 million remaining of our transfer kitty which I believe stood at around £45 million going into the summer. We have spent an awful lot more than that. If we click on transfer history here you can see we have spent £75 million and only sold £850,000 worth of players. The reason that is because the way we structured the deals a lot of them are coming in installments over the years. So we're sort of robbing from our future hopeful successes to be able to sign the players that we require for this season. And looking at the outs, there's nothing really to talk about. Simon Miller was the only player we have received a fee for. He was our backup goalkeeper last season. We sold him to Huddersfield for £850,000. Got him off the wage books. It was something that he wanted to leave. I wouldn't have minded keeping him, to be honest. He's English. He would have counted towards registrations and stuff like that. But he's left now. He's joined Huddersfield. And nobody is any of the wiser. And that brings us to our ins. And we'll start with our cheapest fee of the season, which was £9.25 million. It was a Jerome Anjoune from uh, Salzburg. I believe it was a minimum fee release clause that we activated in his contract. He's an absolutely powerful centre back he looks incredibly well rounded at only 22 years old three and a half star current four and a half star potential and i believe he's going to be one of them players that could propel us from being relegation candidates to being mid-table slash top half finish sort of side he's a really really talented centre back physically he's absolutely fantastic mentally he's really well rounded for someone so young usually you've got some glaring errors in the mental side of things when it comes to a centre back at this age Technically, he's not massively great. 14 tackling, 14 marking, and 12 heading is good enough for me with the 11 passing alongside it as well. So I was really pleased to be able to bring him in for £9 million or so. I think it was a good deal. Next signing was Luca Pellegrini from Juventus for £10 million. A left wing back, we needed one. We only had Ender Stevens on that left hand side after Ziegler returned to his parent club after being at us on loan last season and I think he's going to be an absolutely fantastic long-term left wing back for us. He's better than Ender Stevens and pretty much everywhere. We will just compare them. As you can see Ender Stevens in the blue, Pellegrini in the green. He's an upgrade physically, speed wise, vision, attack and technical. He's a little bit weaker aerially. He's better mentally and he's pretty similar in terms of the defensive attributes. I mean he is just a clear upgrade on Ender Stevens and pretty much everywhere. Technically, he's very, very similar to him. But physically, he's better. Mentally, he's better. And at only 21 years of age, three and a half star current, five star potential. I think £10 million is quite a good deal for him, honestly. I think Juventus actually signed him for £19.5 million a couple of seasons ago. So, yeah, absolutely fantastic business by us, I think. Next up is the old faithful Jack Butland. We signed him for Brighton on uh, FM19 last season and we've signed him now for Sheffield United. I was really looking for some English talent to actually bring into the side for a reasonable fee. It doesn't really exist, honestly. Even the standard, you know, bog standard player who's not even that good in the Premier League was going to cost us 20 million plus. So we signed Jack Butland for 11.75 million. We needed a goalkeeper after Dean Henderson returned to Manchester United from last season. I did actually want to sign Dane Henderson on a permanent deal. He's got a bit more potential than Jack Butland. But um, £85 million was a bit of a no-go for me. So Jack's coming in. He's English. He's going to be first choice. It's not going to be forever. We will eventually look to upgrade Jack. But hopefully he stays at the club for a long time. And now it begins with the contentious transfer. Sebastiano Esposito from Inter Milan. I imagine he's going to be one of them players on Football Manager 20 that everybody signs or talks about at least a little bit. He's only 18 years old, three star current, five star potential. He is going to be leading our line. Now we're banking on this guy performing in the Premier League. Has he even, he hasn't even really played a professional game, one professional game for Inter Milan. And we are going to be chucking him in at the deep end, leading the line for a Premier League side. There was a couple of missed opportunities with other players that resulted in me signing Esposito. We went for a couple of Argentinians who failed the game work permits. So I had to go for a European 
and Esposito was my man. Now, we will look at the club, the board and fan reaction to all these transfers, but I'll tell you now, they're a little bit concerned with how much I've paid for the boy. £20 million is a lot of money, but it is a long-term signing. At 18 years old, he is going to be at the club, well, as long as he actually wants to stay, he will be at the club for a long time. And finally, John Pierre, we signed from Brazil. He's an attacking midfielder, £23.5 million, and I think he is sort of the Rolls Royce of signings that we've made in this summer transfer window. He's just absolutely superb in that attack and midfield role. It was one of the key areas that I really wanted to strengthen during the summer and being able to sign this kind of quality for Sheffield United is definitely a big, big plus. Physically, he's absolutely perfectly well-rounded. Mentally, he's got the attributes in the key areas. Same with his technicals. He's got good free kick taken and the board is still evaluating me on our... Um, how much we take, how seriously we take set pieces. So getting him in was actually a little bit of playing the board a little bit as well, but I would have signed him either way. A four-star current, four-and-a-half-star potential. He is going to be a star. So going forward for the rest of the season, this is the club vision for Sheffield United that has been set out by the board. They want us to make the most of set pieces. We're no doubt going to disappoint them as we did last season. Develop players using the club's youth system. Again, there's not that many coming through right now, so they are reserving judgment, which is fine by me. Play possession football, we have, um, we are going to be adopting that a little bit more strongly than we did last season. We are going to be, I believe we've got the centre-backs now with the technical attributes who can actually start playing from the back, which is something I'm eager to deploy this season. So in signing players for the un, uh, for the, under the age of 23 for the first team, I think every single signing apart from Jack Butland was under 23. Work within the wage budget, we're well on course with that. As you saw, we've still got £70,000 available in the wages. Sign and players to sell for profit. I think we'll be able to profit off of all of them players that we've signed today. Uh, avoiding relegation, of course, that is the only outcome for this season and I'm absolutely fine with that. Fifth round FA Cup, it is a requirement and I won't be playing a second string side as I did last season. And the Lille Cup is reach the fourth round. And one of the nice things about FM20, I think, on the Club Vision screen is having this sort of information displayed for you so clearly the fan and board reaction to each signing that you've made during the window. Luca Pellegrini, fans absolutely B minus, I think it's a really, really good score in terms of being able to sign him. C minus, the board don't think we've spent the money pretty wisely. I think 10 million for Luca Pellegrini is a great bit of business, but time will only be the judge of that. A C for Jerome Onjean. I think the board are a little bit more a little bit more what how would you say it tight when they say transfer budget you know the the fans are definitely responding better to the, the players that we sign for a bigger fees than the board are the main concern as you can see here is the board are disappointed with the deal assigned sebastiano esposito the 20 million pound 18 year old i understand the concern for, for this season he might not be an absolute world. He might not be a £20 million striker this season, but he will definitely bring us more than £20 million in of value over the course of his career. So a D grade for that signing from the board, I think is a little bit harsh. B- minus from the, the fans, they definitely seem a lot more understanding. Uh, Jean-Pierre, B- minus and a B from the board and fans, that's brilliant. C and B- minus from the board, I think is good for Jack Butland. And Tilo Kerrer, the guy we signed in January, is the only one where the board favours it over the uh, actual fans. The fans feel he's been average from when he's played, and but the board are really happy at the fact that we signed him for five and a half million pounds, I think. And just on Tilo Kerrer, we signed him for five and a half million pounds in January. He didn't have a great six month while he was here, and guess what? He is transfer listed by request. He wants to leave the club. He thinks he's too good for us. He's too big, um, and he wants to go to a bigger club. The the window's already shut, so it's not going to happen this, obviously, this this summer. But it might happen further down the line. He's already kicked up a fuss. So in terms of our side for this season, when everyone's fit and when everybody's available, I think this is our best first eleven. Jack Butland in goal, Jean Kerre and O'Connell in the defence. We've got very good deputies in Chris Basham and John Egan in the centre-back role. Now a little bit more strength and depth. At right wing back is probably one of our weakest positions, which is George Baldock. He's still a really, really good attack and right wing back. I was looking to potentially sign somebody else to play underneath him, but Noah Dale seemed viable, so he will be our number one. Luca Pellegrini at left wing back. 
Oliver Norwood and John Flett will retain their positions at centre midfield. And as you can see, according to my assistant at the very least, they are both three star players now in this squad. So another area of weakness may be centre midfield. Jean-Pierre in behind, Oliver McBurney and Esposito, who I want to... I want them to really form a good partnership. And Bernie done absolutely fantastic stuff for us last season in that complete forward role. Getting 11 goals in 36 games for a side who were really, really struggling for a lot of the season and lost a very a lot of games, I think is decent. And Esposito, the 18-year-old, former number one striker, we are banking on you, son. But that brings me on to today's game where there is some changes to our preferred starting 11 purely down to availability as you can see there is some injuries and suspensions that we are dealing with right now uh, so what are the changes jean pierre comes in at central midfield and rather than attacking midfield to replace the suspended oliver norwood and then freeman comes in at that attack midfield role he had a really good season last season freeman in that attack midfield role he's not a great player we've got five goals three assists almost a seven average rating is not too bad esposito will drop to the complete forward role and least move set will be our advanced forward for today's game. So we are at home. We are against Bournemouth. I think we are, we're we not actually favoured. Bournemouth are favoured for this game. They're, they've obviously been in the Premier League for a good few seasons now. So, you know, there was a few players I was actually interested in from Bournemouth, but not none of them actually came through. It looks like last season they beat us once and we drew once. So not the greatest record against them either. But we'll submit our team and get into the first game of the season. So here we are at the first game of the season. Bournemouth come at us with a 4-4-1-1 formation. I'm hoping for a positive start, particularly with us being at home. But Bournemouth do have a decent side. So we'll have to be at our best if we get a win today. Particularly with some of the injuries and stuff we've got. So we kick off against Bournemouth. Knowing that if we can get three points, an excellent start. It'll just be pretty much perfect. We've got pretty uh, relatively simple fixtures going into the first five games or so. Definitely some winnable games for us anyway as the ball's whipped in by Pellegrini. It's cleared by Bournemouth or Freeman. Plays it back out of Pellegrini on the edge. Jean-Pierre goes for the goal. Candreva can clear for Bournemouth. For as long as we're calm here and we don't cause any issues, that's fine. O'Connell with a big ball over the top for Pellegrini on the left-hand side. He's got to the byline. He comes back though and finds Jean-Pierre who goes for goal and it goes pretty wide, <laughs> to be honest. Another highlight now. Cook wins the ball from Esposito on uh, the halfway line. And now Fraser has the ball for Bournemouth, but he loses out the ball. And Esposito is set away. Now he's in behind the Bournemouth defence. It's opened up for him. And Sebastiano Esposito gets his first goal of the season. His first goal for Sheffield United. £20 million well spent. Fuck the board. I don't care what they say. It was a bit of a risk signing Esposito. And obviously this one goal doesn't mean it's paid off. But... He's definitely proved himself to be a cool, calm and clinical finisher. Least Mousset would have missed that chance. Me and you both know that's exactly what was happening if that was Mousset. But Esposito puts it away 1-0. You know, I have changed the tactic a little bit and the player instructions to try and keep a little bit more possession than we did last season. But it doesn't look like it's working. I think the board is still going to be disappointed that we don't play possession-based football. But as long as we're getting results, I don't really care. Another highlight now, Baldock on the right-hand side for us receives the ball from O'Connell. The ball's played in. Jean-Pierre's there. He goes for goal. Begovic with the save. Pellegrini. Begovic with the double save to keep Bournemouth in this game. We are absolutely dominating in terms of attack and intent right now. Bournemouth haven't shown anything to us so far. The corner comes in. It's clear by Fraser. And they survive one more attack. 45 seconds of the first half to go. And there is a final highlight before things finish. And it's Bournemouth who are in possession in our half but they give the ball away to Baldock he's really good at intercepting them passes and the defence has opened up Baldock's in behind and Begovic with another good save to keep Bournemouth in I'm really enjoying our play right now and that's it for the first half we're going 1-0 up a really really pleasing first half performance we've come into it a little bit more with the possession as well but all the highlights have been for us and I'm really pleased with what we're seeing let's kick off the second half early highlight in the second half and it's Bournemouth on the attack but again we win the ball in the midfield. This time it's Jean-Pierre. And the ball is played through to Esposito. Oh, in behind. Esposito. I've just been waxing lyrical about you in the first half, mate. You were in one-on-one. -on -one, a pretty much identical opportunity. What he scored in the first half. But this time he misses. And we go close from the corner. We'll at least move set. <sighs> we should be 2-0 up at least. I certainly hope 
That doesn't come back to bite us as Bournemouth come forward with Kandreva. Switches the play nicely to Ryan Frazier on this left-hand side. Loads of space for them again on the right-hand side with Smith this time. The ball's played in. We'll manage to get a clear. And Freeman brings it down. Finds Lise Mousset. It's 2-on-2 two two if we can act quick enough. We can't. Bournemouth do get back in numbers. Esposito's in the box. He goes for goal. That was a bit optimistic to say the least. And why is Begovic left the ball? That was weird. That was very weird. Another highlight now, 54 minutes in. It's Bournemouth once again who are on the attack, but maybe we can win the ball back and spring a counter. Who knows? But Fraser's is in the box. He's going to go for goal here. Finds Jefferson Lerma. Goes over the bar. That was a poor strike. The second half has been thick with highlights so far. And again, it starts with Bournemouth in possession. Fraser passes the ball down the left-hand side of Deeks. Uh, back to Fraser. But this seems to be causing us a little bit of problems on the wings. But Luke Freeman comes back from that attack midfield roll and gets in and gets the challenge in, which is nice to see. John Fleck switches the player beautifully to Luca Pellegrini on the left-hand side. John Pierre on the edge to John Fleck. Goes for goal. Oh, <laughs> bury one of these, please. Another highlight now. And again, Bournemouth are in possession. Luca Pellegrini gets absolutely done there by Smith. And he switches the player to Frazier on this left-hand side. The overlap from the left-back. What we have come to expect from this match. Um, oh, nearly for it, nearly dispossessed Frazier a little bit. He uh, had a poor touch there. They're keeping possession well, but they're not really advancing anywhere. But it looks like they might be with Brooks. Now, Callum Wilson's in behind. And you will be expecting football manager Callum Wilson to be burying that, to be honest with you. 20 minutes to go. We will look to get Luca Pellegrini off for Ender Stevens. He's definitely struggling a little bit out there. We are going to take our wing backs off attack and just do a support duty just to help try and help stop that uh, wing player that Bournemouth are really, really getting some good uh, joy out of. We're going to go to a balanced mentality and we are going to ask our assistant to put some opposition instructions on. Five minutes to go in this match and there is another highlight. Hopefully it going our way. Lise Mousset heads the ball down. To Stevens on the left hand side. Jean Pierre gets on the edge of the box. Luke Freeman's there. He hits the bar. Oh my god, we have been so close to getting the second goal in today's game. It doesn't look like it's going to happen, but hopefully we don't concede and we can come out of this game with our first three points of the season. Absolutely huge. Sheffield United won, Bournemouth nil. Great result, good performance. I'll take it. Esposito inspires a Sheffield United win. Will praise the living life out of him and hope he keeps up his form. So in terms of our match performance in the board's eyes, we are going to be plus for that match. That's great. We are disappointed of seeing the team's inability to retain possession. That's no surprise, but we've created a lovely number of chances, got the win. And we look pretty clinical in terms of the final third, in terms of creating opportunities, if nothing else. So looking forward to the next episode, I would like to play a couple of Winnable games. So we will look to get the Southampton and Watford game in the belt for the next episode. So let me know what you think of our summer transfer activity. Have I made a mistake spending as much as I did on Esposito rather than signing someone who's a little bit more complete of a player? Or do you think the board are overreacting? I think they are. But anyway, I hope you have enjoyed today's video. Please consider leaving a like and get yourself subscribed. But until next time. Take it easy.